Thank you, Mr. Choge. And uh, that's good to hear that the, the, the participants learned a lot yesterday. And today we will have a session on financial terminologies, just a continuation of what you looked at uh, in the last session. And it will not be a long session. You know, today is a Saturday and maybe some of you could be going for the church and others may be going for other activities. So we are going to make it as uh, short as possible. So uh, to start us off, um, I will start by maybe talking about uh, what we are going to embark on in this session. And uh, uh, financial te uh, terminologies are technical terms. These are the terms that are used in different financial regulations and procedures that you will be coming across as you in schools. And uh, this is to promote sound financial management in schools and even learning institutions. So uh, to be able to promote sound financial management in schools and learning institutions, you are expected to prepare and also to present well-documented books of accounts for auditing. So uh, in Rebecca, this session, Madam Rebecca, yes, can you have it on the slideshow for okay. good visibility? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I hope you are seeing now. Yes. So it is. in this yeah. session, we shall be looking at uh, the commonly used financial terminologies as used in financial management. And uh, by the end of this session, we have some outcomes that we would uh, intend you to uh, acquire uh, as participants. By the end of the session, you are supposed to demonstrate understanding of various financial terms uh, that are commonly used in financial management. And also, uh, you're supposed to be able to apply uh, various terminologies uh, while preparing financial statements of your, of your institutions. So uh, we will start with a KWR about these financial terminologies. I know you know something about uh, these financial terminologies, but I would like us, first of all, we go back to, we be put into groups and uh, we when we get there, we appoint a chair and the chair will give uh, uh, secretary the responsibility of noting the things the members of the group know about uh, financial terminology that is the skills the knowledge that shows that they already know anything they know about financial uh, management for example make it a little bit easier for you and then what you would like to know something that you would like to know about the skills, the knowledge, and the attitudes about the financial uh, terminologies. So, Nancy, you could put us into groups. We are 177. Yes. You can decide to put us in uh, groups of uh, 10. 10 groups are OK. OK. So that, Fine. They, and, uh, so that we know where we are going to start from after we have known what they know and what they would want to know. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, so let me do that. How many minutes, uh, Madam Rebecca? At least 10 minutes, then ten. Uh, they come back to the plenary. Okay, uh, participants, good mornings. Uh, we are going to have the breakout rooms open. So as uh, no more you, click on the prompt. So there you are, you can join the rooms. You join the rooms, join the rooms. Click on the prompt to join the group. And then you can unmute in your respective groups when you are talking to avoid the echoes.
Welcome back to the plenary members. And let's have the secretaries raise their hearts. We start off immediately. Nancy will give them a chance to represent on behalf of their groups. Okay, can we have, we have all the hands down and then we start with group one. Let's be systematic. All the hands to be down and then we start with the group one. Group one to have the hands raised. I can see Catherine Mbati. I will unmute you. You can proceed, Catherine, for group one. Or is it Maximo? Yeah, Maximo, check it. I'm in group five. Okay, so. Hello. Hello. Hello, proceed. I am I'm Chege. Can you hear me? I'm Chege, group one. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, in group one, the members say that they, they know the following terminology. That is balance sheet. They know about legal books, inventory records, cash flow, vote head, auditing, environment, receipt books, delivery, invoice, checkbooks, vouchers, cashier, bazaar, accounting clerks, uh, and also embezzlement of fund, statement of account. What they would like to know, how to prepare a balance sheet, differences of the above uh, names, that is between the books, uh, balance sheet, what is inventory. They want to know each and every terminology and how it is used. How the records can be kept digitally, how to prepare QuickBooks, and they were wondering what is QuickBooks. Then uh, what is audited during auditing? One, uh, another person, Motari, wanted to know how expensive is auditing or, or who cater for the cost of auditing. Another member wanted to know the purpose for having records of accounts. Then another member wanted to know how frequent is auditing done. Then there is another one who wanted to know. Yeah, that is all that we had in group one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chege, for that good presentation. You have represented group one. Well, let's appreciate group one. Okay, meanwhile, let me talk about the many things that they would want to run and also they know a lot about uh, financial management they know about balance sheet ledger books inventory mm -hmm. records so at least we will not be able on what you know we will just uh, maybe touch on what you do not know thank you very much group one group two group two or any other secretary you can appoint them randomly so that we move. Eric Oril, you can proceed. Okay, okay, thank you. I was in group 10. Okay. And the members uh, say that they know balance sheet, cash book, cash flow, debit, credit, and the trial balance. And unfortunately, we were caught up with time on what they didn't know. Thank you very much. Thank you for representing group 10. Let's appreciate group 10. We have heard what you know. And maybe as we go through the presentation, you will be able to see whether what you do not know has been covered. Let's have another group. Group 1 and 10 have presented. Gladys on Yancha. Yes, uh, this is group uh, two. They know the following terminologies, assets, credit, debts, liabilities, capital, public finance, revenue, expenditure, bank statement, balance sheet, school fees, bankruptcy, invoice, cash at hand, register, and checks. What they would like to know, one, is how to make a balance sheet. Two, how many financial accounts are there in an institution? 
and how are they operated. Three, they would like to know what is accounting equation. Four, they would like to know what is double entry. Five, which financial documents are kept in a, an institution that is a school. Six, how many signatories are required when uh, signing for a check. Another question, another thing they would like to know are the documents needed for audit. Another thing they would like to know is how often should audit take place in a school? And then lastly, they'd like to know how to prepare bank reconciliation statement. Thank you. Thank you for that report, Gradis, for group two. It is good that uh, that group discuss a lot on what they know and what they would want to know. We will, as we present, you will uh, realize that we will cover most of the things that you have mentioned that you would want to know. And it is good to note that you know a lot eh, in financial management. You can appoint somebody else. Okay. Nancy. Uh, there is Karibi. Yeah. Rachel. Hello, this is Rachel from group uh, seven. What we know, we know ledgers. We know assets and liabilities. We know cash flow, compound interests, capital and capital gain, networks, balance sheets, trading accounts, profit and loss accounts, stocks, revenue, income, rate of returns. That is what the members in that group know on the terminologies what we would want to know. We'd want to know how compound interest is calculated. We'd also want to know the importance of the balance sheet. We'd want to know how best profit is acquired, especially in a, a, a business or an institution. Then we would want to know the meaning, the correct meaning of all the terms that we have mentioned above. We would want to know how bookkeeping can help in running an institution. And we'd also want to know the importance of knowing the financial terminology. Thank you so much, Group 8, and thank you, everyone. God bless. Group 7. Thank you. Rachel, you. you are in Group 7. I was group? in Group 7. Group seven, seven. Yes. Thank you for that presentation. That is wonderful. You know a lot, and then maybe uh, what you would want to know, some of the technical uh, issues that you would want to know. We also have a financial uh, management course in Kemi. So in case we do not go deep because you realize that you are supposed to tackle the terminologies, you are free also to register for a short course in financial management so that you get to know uh, the many uh, details that you would like to know. For example, that group have uh, realized that they know mostly about the terminologies, but they want to get deeper into financial management. And as at this time, consider Jada. I'm there. Kennedy Minor. <laughs> Kennedy Minor, you can unmute. Okay, fine. Okay, Proceed. yes, uh, this is Kennedy. Am I clear? Yeah, you are clear. I am. I was the secretary for Group Six, and uh, this is what we discussed. What we know, we know the following terms: uh, auditing. We know what is a ledger. We know liability. We know a balance sheet, credit, debit card. We know capital asset. We know interest. We know petty cash. We mentioned to know uh, register vouchers. And then what we would like to know first, uh, we would like to know what is a ledger. We then went ahead to, to, we want to know the difference between a credit card and a debit card and when uh, it is used. We would like to know the meaning of most of the terms that we have mentioned here. And then we would like to know when to use vouchers, petty cash, and how to balance uh, how to balance the or how to uh, uh, balance the balance sheet. Yeah, that's what we discussed. Okay, thank you, Maina, for that presentation. Representing group six, that is good. We have heard what you know and what you would want to know. 
in the presentation, you will realize that we will cover most of the things that you have talked about. We have group four, five, nine, and three. The rest you can put down your hands, but if you are in group four, five, nine, or three, your hand can remain up. Weekly, if you can unmute. Okay. Fine. Morning. Morning. Hello. In our group, we discussed what we know. We know budget, cash Then books. which group is that, Wycliffe? Group four. Okay. We discussed what we know, budget, trial balance. That's what we know. What want to learn, term of term life insurance, number one. Number two, sources of income in learning institutions. Number three, umbrella insurance. And number four, FICO score, that's what we discussed. Okay, good presentation, Wycliffe. Okay, thank you Let's for that. Very fast to another group. Uh, Philemon, you can unmute. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Nancy. Uh, I was in group nine, and this is uh, what we deliberated upon. I will go straight to what we wanted to know because what we want, what we know seems to have been uh, touched by all the other presenters. So I'll go to what we wanted to know. Okay, the first thing that uh, we wanted to know was uh, the difference between assets and liabilities. Uh, that is what uh, one member wanted to find out, the difference between assets and liabilities. Then two, how to prepare balance sheets then how to effectively keep uh, books of account. Um, another member wanted to find out what is bookkeeping. Um, and interestingly, a member called Gitau uh, asked the question, uh, why most accountants and bursars um, run away when they see auditors coming to school? Um, Number, another member wanted to find out the best format of making a budget. And uh, another member um, wanted to know how to prepare a ledger book. Then last but not least on uh, what we wanted to know, we were just wondering about uh, whether we will learn all uh, these um, terminologies and aspects uh, within this um, uh, period of the course. Otherwise, thank you uh, from group, group nine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cheng, for that presentation. Let's appreciate that group. That is group nine. We have heard what you would want to, to run, although maybe if we do not cover what you want to run, Again, I've said we have a financial management course, but later on, as we proceed with TPD, you will realize that we will get deeper into financial management. Uh, thank you. Let's give another okay, I have one presenter. Group. Yes. Waditune. Waditune, you can proceed. Okay, thank you, Madam. Okay. Waditune, thank continue. you, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I was in group eight. And as my colleague has also said and pointed out, most of the part one has been discussed, so I won't go, I won't waste time on that. So my group members really wanted to know, Doris wanted to know what is a standing order, what is a credit transfer, and then what are debentures and balance sheets? What are ledgers? What are share capitals? Doris wanted to know what does it mean when it said honoring a check? What is it meant by dishonoring a check? She also wanted to know what is a bank draft and what really it means when it's written on an, a check on account payee only. Irene wanted to know what it means by buying off checks and also what it means by check offs. And Akini, who was our chair, really wanted to know what what procedure does the bank take in case of a theft inside the bank to secure our finances? Thank you so much. Well, 
Yeah, you have you have so much you want to learn. Uh, karibuni sana. As Madam Rebecca has told you, there's a course specifically for that, so you may not get all these details. Others they'll try as much as they can. Uh, I'm moving on to Catherine Bati. You can unmute Catherine Bati. Okay, proceed. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Hello. I was in group five and most of the things have been said. So there is no need of repeating because we talked about budget, books of account, that is what we know. Let me go to what we want to know. They want to know the different books of account, the ledger, how to do auditing. Uh, they, there is also the chair wanted to know about there is a book he was talking about an online account and it can be done very fast. So he wanted to know what is the name. And also the, somebody else wanted to know about the best practices in accounts. Then how to manage interest and how to prepare a trial balance sheet. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. We have had and we will try to emphasize on the areas that you have talked about that you would want to learn. We have the last group. Okay, Copedio, Copedio, you can unmute. Yeah, proceed. Okay, I'll move. Okay, thank you. Most of what has been said. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello, I am. Okay, I will also say most of what has been said. I won't repeat it, but our group had interest in knowing how valuation is done at the end of the year, vis-a-vis -vis the beginning of the year. If you have stock in the store, for example, that is left at the end of the year, do you value it based on what you the buying price at the beginning of the year was or what the end price was at the end of the year? That was our interest. Otherwise, we also went through the same terminologies, revenue, receipts, profit and loss, trial balance, asset allocation, all those other things that have been covered by other groups. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Copendo. And welcome to the training yes. today. You would like to know valuation of stock at the end of the year. We have uh, various presenters on board and they will maybe tackle that when it comes to it. And um, we start the presentation and we will see um, how far we will be able to cover what you would want to know. So uh, yesterday, you, you, you looked at budgeting. Well, in the last session, you looked at budgeting. And uh, in that last session, um, maybe first of all, I could share my slides so that you're able to see what I'm talking about. So I'm saying that in the last session, you looked at the components of a budget. And uh, they consist of estimated revenue and estimated expenditure. And um, Madam Nancy, are you able to see my slides? Yes, I'm able to see. Uh, you can put them now on the slideshow. Okay. Yeah, others, they are clear. Let me try. Okay, you are fine now, can go. Okay. Okay. So at least we have had what you would want to know in this uh, session, although you will realize that we are going to look at the finance, we are going to look at uh, terminologies, but in case we, you realize that there are many issues that are not covered, we have a financial uh, management course, which you can also, a short course that you can enroll, uh, 
with us. And again, as I've said, as we move on with TPD, you will realize that, uh, for example, for education managers that are on board, we will take you deep into financial management of uh, uh, education institutions. So the first terminology is a budget. And in the last session, you looked at the components of a budget. And uh, we realized that uh, the components of a budget, uh, it consists of uh, estimated revenue and estimated expenditure. And we find that running institutions, they are expected always to undertake an estimation of the revenue that they will get and then the expenditures that they will be likely to encounter. That is before the commencement of the next financial year. So uh, who's uh, supposed to establish the potential sources of revenue so that you are able to uh, no, the revenue that will finance the activities that you have in the, in the coming year. Um, therefore, the requisitions that are provided by various departments at the end of the year, they are the ones that will help you to prepare an annual school budget. So as education managers, I know you have teachers, but it is also important for the teachers to know, because also I believe there's them who are aspiring to be education managers. Uh, you realize that the education managers are the ones who prepare the budgets. They are the ones who prepare the, the budgets. And they prepare the budgets from requisitions that they receive from various departments because we have various departments in the, in the school and every department has their, their needs. So before the year begins, the education manager receives the requisitions from various departments. And it is from those requisitions that the uh, education manager prepares the budget. This budget, after they have prepared, it is the one that they present to the boards of management. And then this um, uh, budget is approved by the board of management. And then they are given permission to uh, carry out the activities that they have in the school. So it is important for the heads of department to always give their requisitions to the education manager so that uh, this they help them to prepare the, the budgets. And uh, I believe that terminology is clear. So uh, there is another activity that I want us to carry out in the charts using the charts, I want us to identify the various sources of revenue or income in our institution. And then Nancy, you will help us to read okay. whatever the participants are, are mentioning. Let them tell us, I know the education managers, this one is very easy for them. Let us mention where do schools get money from? The revenue, the income, where do they get the income from? Let them mention on the chat and then I will recap and then we continue. Okay, they've started coming in. Uh, we have one Evelyn talks of school fees, then another one also fees payment, grants, school fees, uh, fees, school fees, school fees, school fees, uh, school fees from the government. Uh, school fees from students, uh, school from farms in the school, that is IGP, Income Generating Project, CDF, uh, we have parents pay fee, farming activities, uh, CDF, government, okay, projects, farms from the farms, selling farm produce, donations, good, uh, sponsors are uh, good, capitation, bursaries, sale of uh, property, e.g. trees, if you have them, and then hiring of grounds, good, uh, sale of food crops in the school shamba, also fees, loans, hiring of grounds and buses, okay, arambes, uh, free day secondary education, CDF, Income, okay, sponsors, revenues, government. Okay, they are there, Rebecca, more or less the same. House rent, yes. 
bakery, yes. Donations, asset disposal, sponsorship, funds drives, uh, okay, NGOs, that is the private, uh, hiring of school facilities, disposal. So they are talking more or less the same, Rebecca. I think you can proceed, sponsor, slaughterhouse. <laughs> That's for the guru. <laughs> okay. School bus. Okay, so thank you very much, Madam Nancy, for taking us through that. And uh, thank you, participants. It is good to know that you know many, many sources of revenue for schools. And uh, I also have seen somebody say, talk about the alumni, and it is true that alumni, the people who have been in your school, would be a source of in, uh, revenue. So it is good to keep in touch with those students who have gone through your school. Especially, we realize that uh, we have very influential people who have gone through your school and they could be of very uh, of a great importance uh, to your school because you realize that the fees that you, you, you have mentioned about the fees, but the fees might not be enough. Again, you have talked about the government grants that you get from the Ministry of Education. Uh, others even give donations from NGOs and other sources. Uh, then others have talked about income generating activities, higher school buses, uh, for example, school van, school farms, and also a higher of school grounds. All this could be uh, sources of income. If you have a good hall, you could hire it out for a fee. If you have a bus, you could hire it uh, for a fee to the community. So this could be, this could help you generate income. Then also sale of fixed assets. If you have some, if you have, for example, a motor vehicle that you would like to dispose, that income will come back to the school and become a, a source of revenue. Uh, I don't know whether Mr. Choge is allowed. Mr. Choge, are you still in? I'm very around, Madam Nancy. Uh, Madam, Madam uh, Rebecca and Nancy. Yes. Okay, I wish to welcome you. You take them through the vote heads up to where you would want to reach and then they welcome the next presenter. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam uh, Rebecca. Allow me to share my screen. You can pull down your screen so that okay. I can now share my screen. Okay. So I believe I've shared my screen. I don't know if you can. Yes, it's visible, Mr. Choge. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Nancy. Okay, I have it on the slideshow. Okay. Yeah. I okay. believe it is now on a slideshow. Yes, it is. You can proceed. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you, Madam Rebecca, for taking us through that uh, session on uh, sources of revenue and income to our schools. Remember what we have been discussing, it is actually the terminologies. And I appreciate whatever that I believe we all know almost all these terminologies, only that we are only trying to share together what maybe one group doesn't have and we add on to what the other group has. And uh, when we go like that, I am very sure we already know what uh, most of these terminologies in the in the financial uh, part in managing as far as managing our institutions is concerned. Uh, remember what you were taken through yesterday. Actually, it started with a strategic plan, and then it came to budgeting, and then it came to first of all planning and then budgeting. And uh, this is what Madam Rebecca has actually taken us through. And now I want us to move on to vote heads. Uh, remember after budgeting, uh, we want now to put the money or the resources 
to where it is supposed to be utilized as it came from the user departments, as we have been told by Madam Rebecca, that uh, it is a user departments or the heads of department, that is what we are calling the end user departments, who gives the requisition of what they need. And therefore, the money or the resources that is available is put into different areas and this is what i want us to discuss now the vote heads and uh, actually in simple language vote head is simply an item of expenditure or the amount of money given to a certain expenditure or what you require as a, the end user department so it is actually worth noting that our funds are allocated to the budget items according to the vote heads. And our vote head is an item of expenditure. And in our schools, expenses fall under the following vote heads. Number one, we have what is called the tuition. And then number two, we have the boating equipments and stores. We also have repairs, maintenance, and improvements. And then local transport and travel. So. All these are, is what we are calling the vote heads. It's like that, why do we have these vote heads? So that one section is not actually ignored. And remember, in whatever resources that we are using in our schools, it is all directed towards implementation of curriculum. And that is why we have vote heads. And that in most cases, you'll find that these four dates are not supposed to be interfered with whatever has been allocated to a certain vote head, and then it is supposed to be done unless otherwise. And that is why some people are actually asking what is environment that is giving that permission to borrow from one account to another. I believe we have answered that. So tuition account includes things like exercise books. We have textbooks, stencils, duplication papers, chalk dusters, chemicals for laboratory project work, materials for examination, ETC. Most of the time, or it is strictly this account or this forehead, once the revenue or the resources has been allocated, then there is no environment. There is no borrowing from this account. Strictly, it has to be utilized in those items. And then we have the boarding equipments and stores. This one here will now depend on the type of school that you are running. Maybe it's a day school, but I believe even the day schools, most of them have boarding section or boarding accounts or that vote aid for boarding. But in an event, like for example, most of our primary schools are not boarding and mostly they don't have that boarding equipment. But this, at the same time, we they have equipments and stores. So these include foodstuffs, cleaning materials, so for the kitchen and dormitories, beds, mattresses, blankets, and toilet papers. So even if you are talking of you are not a boarding school and therefore that vote aid is not there, there is the issue of equipment and uh, there is the issue of cleaning materials and therefore it has to be considered. And then we also have repairs, maintenance and improvement, what we are calling RMI, RMI, the cost of general and minor repairs to tuition and boarding equipment, to staff houses and school buildings, and then ground maintenance and social improvement. So remember, we have mentioned the sources of income, and most of us, we have mentioned about uh, school or staff houses as a source of income. So we have that voted. And then we have the local transport and travels. These include all travels expenses of staff on official trips, 
claims of board members while traveling to school for official duties. But remember in this one here where we are saying claims of board members, these will depend on each and every individual school depending on the income that they have. Remember, for example, if we talk about uh, claims of our board members, like for example, from my village, if I'm a board member and I stay in Mombasa and I'm supposed to travel all the way to Western Kenya, if I claim the transport there, then it will now be, I will be actually depleting all the budget. And therefore it will now depend on the type of school and the availability of resources. But at the same time, it is a voted, isn't it? So uh, there is also a local transport and travel, that is what I mentioned. And then electricity, water, and conservancy. These include electricity and water bills, fuel for generator and water pumps, maintenance of lighting equipment, sewage services, paraffin, gas, and wood. Then there is also activity. These include a uh, cost associated with the financing co-curricular activities such as the purchase of games equipment, trophies and awards, transport costs associated with the co-curriculum, food for pupils undertaking co-curricular activities. And then we have personal emoluments. These include payments of salaries for non teaching and support staff, board of management, and then teachers and other workers employed by the school boards. So remember, this is that vote head. So remember, in every institution, you'll find that every section has been given the amount to spend so that other, in, other, 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 other parts or other votes do not actually overuse and hence we forget the other sections and at the end of it all we might not actually implement the curriculum as it is supposed to be so and then we have financial registers and records uh, for you as an institution or for us as education managers and all of us are education managers remember if you are not the head teacher you are the deputy if you are not the deputy you are the senior teacher, if you are not the senior teacher, you are a classroom teacher and therefore you are managing those learners. If you are not the classroom teacher, you are not, a, a, say, a class teacher, and then you are a subject teacher. You are an end user for your, for your subject. And therefore, it's you who will identify what is needed by these learners for uh, proper implementation of curriculum to go on. And therefore, you must actually ensure that you participate or you give the management what you require for uh, curriculum implementation. So all of us as education managers, let us, I believe we are now aware that we have all these four heads and therefore it is you to trigger what is required in your area where you are handling for the institution or for the management to know what you need and so that they actually plan well for the whole year. Then we come to financial registers and records. And uh, to promote financial internal controls in learning institutions, there is need to keep financial registers and records. And uh, we have quite a good number of these financial registers and records. And uh, you, ranging from, we have the fee registers, we have the rent registers, we have the commitment registers, impressed registers, checks and or money order registers, motor vehicles work, handling, handing over and taking over that uh, there is somewhere that Madam Rebecca had actually typed. And then asset register, and then we have the class register. Now, fees register is actually for the purposes of monitoring payment of school fees by students. These are records that are kept or records that will assist in monitoring payment of school fees by each and every individual student. 
such that if you see student X, then you know that on such and such a date, he paid this amount on such, this is the balance, and this is what is still required. Each and every individual student has that record or must actually have the records on that. And then we have rent register. For the rent register, it is for the purposes of monitoring or the monitors the amount of rent levied on institutional resources. So that you know that house A, house B, house C is paid by so and so, and this is the amount. Like for example, other houses will be two bedrooms, others will be one bedroom, others will even be bed sitters. And therefore, it has that allocation so that you know that from house number one, this is the amount that is supposed to be paid. And therefore, that rent register. And it will be showing that the owner or the occupant of this and this premise has paid or this is the amount he paid on such and such a date. Or this is the balance that we still require from the occupant of house number three. So, and then we have commitment register. This is actually for the purposes of expenditure controls and monitors the vote head commitments. Remember in every vote head, and then you know that this is the match that we have allocated to vote head number, this, this say a uh, voting section. This is what we have uh, allocated stores. And this is the match that we have used. So you record that one on, uh, 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 that is on commitment register. And then we have impressed register. This one is for the purposes of records, or we record the monies given to officers to carry out official duties. Like for example, if you are taking the students for games and therefore the school has paid you, this is what we are calling impressed register. This is the school or the account, the accounting officer will record that this is the amount of money that you are paid. This is a, your daily allowance. This is a transport. This one was for maybe any emergency. And therefore you have the holder or actually the person who was paid will sign. So that is what we are calling the impressed register. And then we have checks, money orders, and uh, registers. All money orders and checks received are recorded and monitored in this one here. That is the checks and money orders register. And then we have the motor vehicle work. So this one is to monitor the usage of school motor vehicles and repairs. So anything that has been spent on motor vehicle, school motor vehicle, remember I've said school motor vehicle, it will not be allowed. For example, I am the, the CEO or the head teacher and I use my own vehicle, and then you record there that uh, this is what was used on this. It is only for motor vehicles, work. motor vehicles use usage of school motor vehicles and repairs, not any other. And then we have handing over and taking over. This is actually to promote accountability. Remember, uh, when you start work, we commit to work anywhere in, the can, in this country. And therefore moving from one station to another is inevitable. And when you are moving from one station, then you need to hand over to the person who is taking over from you. And this is, and this is the records that we shall be using, handing over and taking over uh, records. And this one here is very important. It is a way of monitoring or transparency or ensuring smooth transition and continuation of school program. And that is why we normally talk of there is no vacuum in any learning institution because as you are leaving, you hand over. And as you are coming in, you take over. So, and then we have asset register with to provide list of assets owed by the school. Very important again, the asset register is very important. It is a way of ensuring that the public resources are kept well, and therefore there is that track record of knowing these uh, assets. And then we have the class register. 
This is actually to establish the student's population and at the same time to track the population of the learners. And when the learners are present and when they are absent and those who have left school. So that is uh, the registers that we have in our learning institution. Uh, Madam Nancy, uh, get ready so that you post us again to, I believe we are about uh, 200 and, uh, 250. And uh, my wish is that we have only five groups in this one here. So uh, we have an activity, that is activity two. Mrs. Tito has been a principal for, uh, for the last 10 years in XYZ Second School or school located in one of the urban centers in Kenya. And uh, due to transfers, Mrs. Tito has received a letter from, from her employer to go and head a nearby upcoming uh, institution. So two days after receiving the transfer letter, the new principal report to XYZ school. And then the teacher service commission subcounty director organized for official handing over and taking over. My question is, explain the importance of proper handing over and taking over by heads of institution. That is question number one. Explain the importance of proper handing over and taking over by heads of institution. Number two, question number two. Mention some of the documents that need to be handed over by Mrs. Tito to the new principal. Mention some of the documents that need to be handed over by Mrs. Tito to the new principal. Madam Nancy, I believe our dear participants have the questions with them. They've known what we are supposed to do. Can you create for us five groups? Five groups okay. for easy management. Five groups only. Mr. Choge, can you allow uh, the 10? Because I see the number has grown and they may not be able to hear one another. Is it okay? And then we'll sample. Okay, 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 fine, fine. Not even sampling, we will give them a few minutes each, each group to participate, to, to, to present. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Madam Nancy, go on. Okay, so. Lynette Masika, you can join, you can join the, the, the group.
Mr. Choge, we are back to the plenary hall. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back to the plenary hall. And uh, Madam Nancy, I believe uh, all of us are back and we are ready to give our deliberations in our, our breakout rooms, what they discussed before we do uh, a wrap up of that part. So you said you want us to do a sample or every group to have one minute or two minutes, two minutes. Okay, uh, depending on the time, we, we could, uh, because now they have the graphs, we could uh, get one, two, two groups giving us question one and then uh, another three or so giving three. Exactly, you get, yeah. you do it randomly so that we have two groups giving us uh, uh, question one and then two other groups giving us uh, 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 what, uh, what, uh, question two. Okay. So that will move very fast. We okay. had actually promised them that by 11.30 will be, you should be done. Okay. So there we go. I will, I will get uh, Paula. Paula, you can unmute. Paula, you can unmute and proceed. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was in group two, and uh, in group two, we discussed the importance of proper hunting over and taking over. We had a few points in group two. The first one was uh, uh, accountability for accountability purposes. And uh, we had uh, for proper planning of the school by the incoming head of institution. And then we also had uh, another point as uh, it enables the smooth transition from uh, one HOI to the other one. Uh, can I talk about, we discussed so much about the documents. Can I talk about it? Or, uh, yes, go on, go on, go on. Uh, the documents we discussed so much, we had uh, the documents that are re required where, when taking over and handing over, we had the school seal, we had oh. the title deed, checkbooks, bank statements, uh, assets of the school like the trees, cows, the farm, the stores. Then we had the school registers where we had the fee register, the parents register, the impress register, the creditors list, the debtors list. And then we also had the list of uh, of staff and the workers, the registration certificate of the school, the certificates of the learners, uh, admission doc documents, entry and exit documents. We had files where we had the BOM files, teachers files, documents of procurement, tendering. We also had uh, handing over on the ongoing projects and uh, all legal documents. That's so far a summary of what we discussed in group two. Rather, it was a, thank you, a thank very you so, good group. Where thank you so much, uh, Group Two, for that exhaustive uh, discussion. Uh, Madam Nancy, if you can actually pick another group, and uh, so because Group One has actually exhausted what we were still expecting from the other, you can pick one group again randomly. Okay. Eunice Gebet. Thank you so much, our facilitators. In ours in group eight. Hello. Yes, we can hear you go on. We discussed the importance of proper handing over and taking over. Some of the points have been mentioned. Let me mention uh, more for smooth continuation of school program. For to be for the principal to be aware of the financial situation in a school. And then we also had another point to make the new principal aware of the happenings in the school. And lastly, for proper planning. Let me also add some few items to be handed over as follows, according to our group, the logbooks, the balance sheets. We also have the audited financial reports. And lastly, the stores ledgers. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice and your group for that, uh, for the insights you have given us. Madam Nancy, can you give us one group, the last group, randomly? Bishop Ross, Kamala, can proceed. Thank you. I was in group number one, and uh, many of the points have been given, but let me give what I feel maybe can be emphasized on. Number 
one, that we should explain the importance of proper handing over, number one. Number two, it helps to understand the mood of the school for the incoming head. Then number three, it reduces chances of accusations for the outgoing head. And finally, on question number two, everything was given, but on a light note, I think this group one was a very lively group. And on a light note, they also proposed that when it comes to handing over, the, the documents that should be handed over, they should also hand over those teachers that belong to the kitchen cabinet, the, the spy teachers should also be handed over confidentially. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Bishop Rose. <laughs> so we, we now have a new item to be handed over. Okay, on a light note still. Thank you, thank you, uh, Group One, for uh, those for the insights you have given us. I believe uh, when we look across, can we still add one or we proceed? Madam uh, Nancy, what do we do? Uh, let's add one, Pascalia. Pascalia, you can unmute. Thank Only you so much. Yes. Thank you. I think I'm being heard. Yes, yes you we are. can hear you. I was the secretary for group three. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So for question one, the importance of proper handing over and taking over, and as much as my colleagues have said the points, I'll just repeat them. Number one, we said for continuity, then two, to promote a smooth transition, three, to promote transparency, four, to promote accountability. And then uh, five, to capture the data and the creditors of the school. The part B of the question, the documents to be handed over uh, by the new principal. One, the assets register. Two, the fees register. Three, the cash register. Four, the students register. Five, uh, audited accounts. Six, list of data and creditors. Seven, used and unused receipt books. Seven, the handing over and taking over register. Uh, seven, the logbook, the school logbook. Eight, the bank statements. Uh, nine, the commitment register. Uh, 10, the, uh, the checkbooks. Thank you, that is all we said in group uh, three. Wycliffe was our chairman. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful group three. Uh, you have done so well. Uh, thank you. I believe uh, what we have presented in the few groups that we have actually sampled out is what also the other groups have uh, the other groups have discussed. And uh, exactly. I can see somebody has said uh, the boy child has been left out. But uh, we have been told that, or what I, uh, in fact, as I was going around the groups, I discovered that most of the chairpersons were the boy child. And therefore, they are part and parcel of uh, what has been discussed by all the other teams. Wonderful team. You are a good team. All of you, you are good teams. Now, allow me again to share my uh, screen so that we can actually. Yes, Madam Nancy. I can see Mr. Mkabala has, from the chat, he has a question, so you can allow him to ask. I don't know. Yes, so, Mr. Mkabala, meanwhile, as I share the, the, the screen. You have echoes. Huh? Mr. Mr. Mkabala, Mkabala, we can't hear you. Are you able to hear now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Go on. Yes, I, I was asking, uh, my group members asked that, uh, what name do we give to a list of creditors and debtors? What name because do it's we one give? Of the, it's, yeah, it's one of the registers to be handed over. What name do we give to what? A list of creditors and debtors. Okay, th that one will be answered. Thank you. We are moving on. We will get there. Thank you. 
So thank you teams for responding to activity two. And uh, these could be some of the, let me put it to slideshow. Yes. Yes. And uh, these uh, could be some of the responses that we made. And I believe we have even gone beyond one of the items that should be handed over during official handing over or taking over include the cash book. We also have the bank balances, very important, the bank balances. And remember the bank balances should be immediate, isn't it? And uh, once the bank balances has been, or the bank statement has been uh, actually uh, dispensed from the bank, then there should be no other transactions as you are handing over. Remember the change of signatories must actually follow immediately. Then there is also the checkbooks. We have the logbooks. We have the balance sheet. We have the audited financial reports. Remember the audited financial reports is the advice. It is the state of how the finances are, and it is official, by the way, very official, and then list of creditors, and then list of debtors, and then we have stores, ledgers. Remember, in any learning institutions, whatever we are doing or whatever we, the money that we are spending, all of them will end in stores. Most of the money actually ends in stores. Uh, because it is about buying items. It is about buying items. And then we have asset registers and then the annual budget estimates, the annual budget estimates. Allow me to move forward. And what are the importance of keeping financial registers by learning institutions? Number one, they are useful when preparing books of accounts. They are very useful in preparing uh, books of accounts. So that importance of keeping financial registers, very useful in preparing books of accounts. And then number two, they act as internal controls. This is what you can use to know the far you have done and the far that is remaining and the match that is still required that could actually take you through as per the plan or as per the budgeting or as per what the vote heads received. And then uh, promotes accountability and transparency since they will form part of the audit trail. Audit trail. And I remember uh, when we were looking at what you want to know or what you know, somebody actually raised an issue that why is it that when the auditors come, the accounting officer or the buzzers, let me not actually point out that it is a buzzer, but the accounting officers will always run away, will always develop some cold, that, that they be, develop that fear. It is because we have not actually adhered to the plans. And remember, when it comes to finances in the learning institution, when it comes to implementation, if we don't follow the plan, if we don't follow what we have done in the budget, if we don't follow what we have allocated to various vote heads and keeping the records and becoming disciplined, then things will go wrong. The reason why we are doing budgeting is for us to ensure that whatever we have planned to utilize as resources, then it will take us to where we are expecting to get to. It will take us through the whole term, through the two terms, through the three terms, and therefore we complete the year. But if we don't become disciplined, and follow the budget, we don't actually uh, spend the money as it was allocated, then we shall land into challenges. Then it allows you to attain complete regulatory compliance. Remember, in whatever you are doing, you, you are actually handling 
public resources. And therefore, there are regulations that we must follow. And that is why we have auditors. Somebody had asked also, where are these auditors coming from? Remember, they are coming from, for us, they are coming from the Ministry of Education. We have auditors in the Ministry of Education. And every sub-county, every county has auditors who will actually assist us. But even before we go to the sub-county auditors, can you exercise your own internal audit? You, you do it, you audit yourself by looking at what you have done. So, and then can be used for future references. And remember what has been these registers. They are sometimes kept as far as even over eight years. So if you miss today, remember you are still on the circle of being uh, actually charged, so long as you are still within that time, it can, the books can still be revisited. And after including even up to eight years. And that is why you are told when it comes to procurement, all the records must be kept for at least a minimum of six years because it will be revisited every year by the auditors. And then we have the financial terminologies. Remember when we started, we said that uh, what we are confining ourselves to is actually financial terminologies. We may not actually explore each and every part, like because uh, I've heard some people saying how to prepare the cash book, how to prepare the, 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 the books of account. We may not actually exhaust. But as you are told by Madam Rebecca, we have a whole course, and I know the managers here, and when I talk about the managers, the head teachers and the principals in this group or in this room, they know how hectic it is to prepare books of accounts. And that is why most of our schools have accounts officers and bursars to assist, and, and these are the specialists. But for you as head teachers, we have a whole course for uh, head teachers on financial management. Somebody had asked also about IPSAS. That is the financial reporting that the government is using at this particular time. And therefore we also have a course on that where we are taking through the financial officers, the accountants and the bursars. And there is also the course for principals and head teachers on financial management. And therefore that is where we can actually get a comprehensive course or a detailed course on preparation of books of accounts. So let me just touch on what is a cash book. And uh, we are saying that this is actually in simple language, a financial journal that actually contains cash receipts and disbursement, including bank deposits, cash receipts and disbursement including bank deposits and withdrawals. This is what we are calling the cash book. We normally give it a language or a term that it is the primary repository. It is called the primary repository where all the basic information will be there since we are dealing with finances. Remember in finances, not even a single coin should not be recorded, it should be recorded because we are handling public resources. And that is why even at some point, we shall be looking at discounts. When discounts, when you are given discounts, then you are also supposed to record. So uh, we are saying that uh, book, the, the cash book, the, this, this, this document can be divided into two. We have the cash and I believe you know what is cash where we are talking about the notes, we are talking about the coins, and we are also talking about the checks. And then we have the book. This is simply the documentation of any transaction that has been done that touches on finances. So uh, we are saying that cash is real monetary instruments like coins, notes, checks, and used 
as medium of exchange for acquiring goods and services. While the book, on the other hand, refers to a compiled record of the information, a failed in the written or printed form. And remember, this one here has a way and it must tally. This is what the auditors will always need. This is all about the management of finances in the learning institution. Uh, we are saying that we have three, there are four types of cash, cash books. Namely, we have single column book, cash book. We have two column cash book. We have three column cash book. We have the petty cash. And uh, when we look at the single column uh, cash book, this is only, it records only uh, cash transactions. Single column cash book records only cash transactions. While in the two column cash book, uh, we have two types of transactions and uh, two separate columns. One side is cash column and the other side actually is bank column. That is the two column cash book. And then we have what is called a uh, three, uh, three columns cash book. And in this one here, you'll find that it has triple column uh, or what we are, is called triple column cash book. So it actually compacts uh, or a compact of, uh, it's a compact of three uh, sections. We have one cash, we have bank, and then we also have what is called discounts. And that is why I told you, even the discounts must be recorded. So it is a cash, it is the bank, and then it has the discounts. So all these are recorded on a sales or purchases of goods. They are actually, that is the sales, or purchases of goods. And then we have the final one, what is called the petty cash book. And a petty cash book involves uh, a minimal amount of, uh, of, of transactions. This is where we are putting in the petty, or, or that is a minimal transaction that has been done by the institutions. So that is the single cash book we have the we have given the notes there on the single cash book. Once you get to the, our LMS, you'll find that we have each and every uh, explanation on single cash book. We also have, have given, we have also given uh, the format of a single column simple cash book. And uh, you'll find that also with the single column or simple cash book, it has the debit side, it also has the credit side. And therefore, uh, the debit side represents the left hand side of an account, while the credit side represents the right hand side of an account. So I've also given uh, the cash book and uh, we have the features of a two column cash book, whereby uh, the first one on the features of a two column cash book, it has the left hand side of the cash book and then a cash book should be written on a daily basis. It is very important to note that this cash book is written on a daily basis. And then it records cash and bank transactions only. It records cash and bank transactions only. Then it records all transactions in a, a chronological order. That is starting from what came first, followed by what followed like that, like that up to the end. And then cash payments can never be greater than a cash receipts. Cash payments can never be greater than cash receipts. Then cash transactions are written directly in the cash book, hence brief explanation is required on the details column in the cash book to know the nature, the source of transaction. It is very important to know that that, that narrative must be there for it to be interpreted even by another person who is no, will not be there at that particular time when these notes were written. So that uh, narrative must be clear. And then we also have, I've put the summary on a two column cash book, whereby we have said that a cash book record cash receipts and payments, which include bank withdrawals and deposits. 
So anytime money is paid to the school, whether in form of cash or check, it is recorded on the debit side of the cash book, while payments are made on the credit side of the cash book. But it is important to note that institutions do not actually encourage cash payments. And if it must be on cash, then it must be included in the receipt. Whereby we normally talk of receipt is that document that will allow money to come to school. If you have no receipt, don't take it in your hand. Those are public funds. Don't just memorize it. No, it must be receipted. So the left-hand side of the cash book is called debit side, while the right-hand side is called the credit side. So due to the nature of records kept by school, schools use a cash analysis cash book, which not only reflect cash and bank columns, but also various vote heads. Uh, remember in this cash book, it has also that narrative where every vote head has to be recorded. So analysis cash book shall be handled at a later stage. Now we also have the triple column cash book, and that is why you are seeing about three uh, columns that is talking about money. So the triple column cash book is compact of form of cash book in which all the three columns, i.e. cash bank and the discounts. So here all the cash and the bank uh, related transactions are recorded along with the discount on sales or purchase of goods. Remember in any discount, when you are buying, when you are given the discount, it is not yours. It belongs to the institution. It belongs to the school. And that is why it has to be recorded. It has to be recorded or else you'll find that you'll pay from the bank. And then you have said this is the amount that was used. But again, what has remained or what has been brought back may not tally when you'll be balancing your books of account. And that is why the actually we, 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 are, we are supposed also to record the discounts. So there is also the petty cash. I've given the sample of the petty cash. And uh, this one here, as I had said, it is the transactions taking place on a significant number of times daily recorded in a general cash book may make it bulky and uh, difficult to handle because you are doing it small money. So therefore, such numerous business operations involving a minimal amount of transactions can be written down in a separate book called a petty cash book. Let me just end there so that uh, we don't take time. So there is also this activity. Uh, we are told to explain the three reasons why schools should keep a cash book. And this one here, I want you to respond to on the chat. Then Madam Nancy will take us, will sample about three or four responses on, 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 on our chat. Explain the three reasons why should schools should keep a cash book. Why is it that schools should keep a cash book? Respond on the chat. Okay, Mr. Choke, they are coming in for accountability. Uh, yes. To control accounts for transparency purposes, for accountability to cater for emergency, for proper records, for accountability, for transparency, to follow on expenditure, to know on the income and expenditure for future reference, to track on the cash flow. Uh, for reference, accountability, accountability, integrity, and for the small running of the school to control the flow of cash for better planning and for auditing, uh, to monitor expenditure for cash security. Okay. Uh, for future budgeting, for proper record keeping. Okay. For auditing to make uh, for, for the balancing of accounts for professionalism. Hmm? 
for easy and hover auditing. So they are more or less the same, Mr. Jogge, for smooth running. Thank you, so thank you, thank you, Madam Nancy. Thank you, uh, team, for responding under your responses. Actually, what you have given is very correct, where it is actually for proper records, accountability, for cash flow tracking. Remember, we are handling public resources, and therefore we must be as transparent as possible, as much as possible. Therefore, we must be, we must, there must be a clear way of how we have received the money and how the money has actually left, how we have paid for the services in school. Remember what we are collecting is for a certain purpose, and that is why we started with the four tiers. And uh, therefore, we are saying that uh, importance of a cash book, uh, one, the total cash receipts and payments of the school are easily known at any time from the cash book. Then the amount of cash in hand may be known at any time without any having to count money in the cash box if the cash book is properly maintained. Then maintaining cash books can help prevent labor and time loss. And then cash security can be ensured as cash balance of the cash book must be reconciled with the cash balances of the fund. And uh, it is easy to detect any errors as all cash transactions and records in the cash book is concerned. And therefore, to add on that, remember there are errors that we can do. And therefore, if you have not recorded them in the cash book, then the errors may not be discovered. And therefore, it is a way of auditing ourselves as managers. It is a way of giving or explaining to the people. Remember, we talked of uh, where do we get this money from? When the government pay or gives the grants to the schools, or actually when the money that is trans, uh, uh, dispersed from the government comes to school, then at the end of it all, we must show the Ministry of Education how we have utilized the money for rich and th that was actually allocated to rich and every individual learner. And that is when we record them in the cash book or whatever has come to school from the parents or the donors. Then from the cash book, we are able to have the flow, how it was used, how they left their account to the services, isn't it? And uh, the next one is cash and bank reconciliation statements. This helps to reconcile the difference between money in the bank and the amount in the financial record, such as the cash book. And uh, below is a reconciliation statement. Uh, we have the bank balances as per the bank statement. We have the bank reconciliation statement test, the differences, and then bank, uh, bank balances as per the accounting records, i.e. the cash book. So remember that bank reconciliation is where you are reconciling the records that you have or what you have in school and what is in the bank. Uh, it has its own importance, and we shall still see the importance of uh, uh, this uh, bank reconciliation. And then now uh, we have activity four. Why is it advisable that reconciliation of these financial records can be done on a quarterly basis? And then give reasons why sometimes the bank balances rarely agrees with the balances in the cash book. So again, I'll request that we go, uh, we, we actually go to the chat, or can we go to the group, Nancy? Or I believe we can actually have it on the chat for us to save time. We can have it on the chat. Yes. Save on the yeah. Exactly. Yes, I can also see there's writing on the chat chats. <laughs> okay. C can you have the answers on the chat? Uh, why is it advisable? 
Okay, for easy of track, Mr. Choge, for transparency and accountability, for easy management of funds to avoid congestion of work, transparency for tracking purposes, for easy tracking of purposes to keep the managers on toes, <laughs> for effective monitoring to minimize errors, bank balances, uh, transparency, transparency for consolidation of accounts and transfer of money, and also the bank balances are different because of transaction costs. Yes, and for effective monitoring. Mr. Choke, there you are to avoid- Thank you, thank you, Madam Nancy. Thank you, thank you team for your responses. Allow me to move uh, forward. So uh, bank statements may not agree due to the following. One, could be because of unprecedented checks and uh, they are checks issued by the institutions that has not yet been presented to its bank for payments. And that is why you can have the difference in what you have in school and what is in the bank. One of them is because of unprecedented checks. Then there is also the standing orders and uh, they are standing orders instructions from the institutions to bank to make regular payments, e.g some loans, I don't say car loans because of late it is even difficult. Say, say any other transactions that uh, you have actually instructed the bank to do uh, from your account. And then there is also direct debits. You may not have uh, records of what the parents have paid direct to the school account, but then you, the school, the, the school account has already received the money and yet the, uh, the, the, the record has not reached school and therefore that one brings some disparities. And then there's also the bank charges. Definitely there are the bank charges. So they are charges made by the bank to the institution for banking services use. And then the interest allowed by the bank. So they are interest received for deposits kept in the bank. So therefore, the money you may be having in school may be less uh, because maybe the bank has paid the interest also to what you have in your account or also as a result of deductions that the bank has already uh, done. Then uh, I want us to end there so that we have a short break. And when we come back, Mr. Kisilu will take over from there. Otherwise, I want to thank you, team. And uh, you have how many minutes break, Madam Nancy? Mm, we can go for 15, 20 minutes. Let's see what yeah. they have on there. I believe. And there's a register there already posted. Yes. Yeah. So when 20, we come back. 20 minutes. You can give them 20 minutes. 15 minutes is OK, because we want to release them early. Sour, sour. They should thank also you. agree to that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so back at what time? They'll be uh, right now, it's uh, around 10 40. 10 So, 30. yes, at around 11 for 30 minutes, we shall be done. Okay, fine. So, we come okay. back at 11 10 uh, 55. 10 Good. Thank you, Mr. Joge. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Nancy. Okay, Karibu. Class, you can applaud as you go for break. Uh, the facilitators. Work done so far. Yes, they're saying it's good presentation. Good. So you can take your break and let's be back at 10.55. Thank you.
Member, Asante, Wachani Pande Il Pass Niende. And the Ruti.
So welcome back members. Um, we are only left with three fi uh, financial terminologies, the try on balance, the balance sheet, So I trust you can uh, see my screen. Madam Nancy. We can see it, Mr. Kisilo. You work at a slideshow. Yes, yes. Yeah, slideshow. So thank you very much. Uh, so. Can you uh, zoom? Like, Are you in a position like, to zoom? Uh, let me let me see. Mm. Because it's it's not visible. It's not visible. Yeah, yeah, the writings are kidogo. I think now I have my full screen. Yeah, it is it is clear right there. Thank you, thank you. So uh, members, my name is Martin. Uh, we're just going to pick from where Mr. Choge has left. And uh, we were looking at financial terminologies since morning with Madam Rebecca and, and Mr. Stephen Choge. And I want to conclude with uh, just three uh, terminologies, uh, the trial balance, the balance sheet and uh, auditing. And therefore, we want to start with a KWL, which we shall execute via our chat forum, Madam Nancy. So uh, we would start. We could start with uh, maybe uh, what our participants know about the trial balance, the balance sheet, and auditing. Uh, kindly let us share through the chat forum what we know about the trial balance, the balance sheet, and auditing. Okay. Madam Nancy? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm watching out for the responses yes. in the chat. Yeah, once we are done with what they know, then you can take us through what they, want, they would like to know. What they have learned, we shall actually look at at a, at a later time. Participants, can you have uh, the responses? We get the feedback. We proceed. Uh, what do you know about trial balance sheet and auditing? What do you know about? What is it about? What do you know about it? It is used in accounting goods. Uh, there is column for assets and liabilities, yes. <laughs> it is worked on every month. Auditing is checking of the financial records. Auditing is the scrutiny of, okay, it is the statement, auditing seeks to know if funds were utilized properly. It shows the balances at the end of the uh, trading period uh, is an official inspection of accounts. Balance sheet is financial statement. Uh, trial balance is done every month. So far, those are the feedbacks. Thank you so much. What uh, let, let, Let's also have a sharing on what they would like to learn. That is good. That is good. That is good okay. feedback coming from the plenary. Thank so what you, do you want to know? What do you want to know about uh, trial balances? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Let's get the responses on the chat. What is it about you want to know? How to prepare trial balance, Mr. Kisilu? Mm -hmm. Okay, about bookkeeping, that is how to, how to make a trial balance how it is made, how to make a trial balance, how it is developed, the contents. Okay, basically they want to know how to prepare a balance sheet. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, members. Uh, maybe for the how, we may not go to the details of the how, but the contents, of course, since uh, this session is basically on the, the financial terminologies and what they are, what they mean in financial, uh, financial management or uh, fin financial literacy, but then um, we will at the end of it all ensure that at least um, uh, we achieve uh, our objectives of our uh, session today. Thank you very much. So then um, we could um, 
we could uh, actually uh, uh, move further. And uh, when it comes to the financial terminology trial balance, then uh, it is simply a list or a summary of all the debit and credit entries in the ledger account at the end of a given period of time. And uh, of course, uh, like uh, somebody has talked about, it is prepared once every month. Actually, the trial balance normally, uh, of course, uh, this summary of all the debit and credit entries in the ledger account is done uh, monthly. Uh, of course, what we have, uh, giving what we have in, in cash and the bank balances. So uh, when all these uh, entries have been recorded, are uh, well recorded in the trial balance, then of course uh, the debits and the credits will be equal. And therefore when filling the details on the trial balance, uh, the, we need to know that of course, the liabilities uh, have credit balances while the assets have debit balances. So this, this document uh, plays an important role in the, in the preparation of financial statements, uh, of course, uh, uh, the income and the expenditure statement. And uh, uh, it is actually through the trial balance that of course now we also derive the balance sheet. So uh, uh, these two are, are technically referred to as financial statements. And uh, I want to simply share a, a simple format of uh, um, uh, the trial balance. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I think I have uh, missed out on that uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the format. I think I'll share that in the notes. So uh, maybe when you are talking about the trial balance, most importantly, it is for us to note that uh, uh, it is prepared monthly and uh, uh, the entries of the trial balance, uh, of course, must, ma ma must balance. And that uh, when uh, we are also filling uh, this document, then uh, the liabilities must have credit balances while the assets uh, must have debit balances. And therefore we are saying at the end of it all, this is the document that leads us to actually uh, driving of uh, the, the, the document, the balance sheet. And that is why we are saying uh, they are referred to as financial statements. Now the balance sheet, uh, uh, simply when you talk about the balance sheet, uh, this is uh, a document that shows uh, the assets and the liabilities of an institution. And uh, uh, it has two main sections in the form of non, uh, in, the, in the case of non-profit organizations, where actually our institutions fall under, we have uh, assets and liabilities. And when we talk about assets, uh, assets are the things that are owned by the school. Uh, of course, uh, when you talk about what is in the in the form of uh, cash and what uh, is in the bank, uh, liabilities are actually what we are hold uh, by, of course, uh, uh, suppliers, the creditors, and, and and all that, and therefore they form uh, the liabilities. So it is simply a, a balance sheet of institution shows the worth of that institution in terms of the, the, the assets and in terms of the debts of the institution. It paints the, 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 the picture of the institution in terms of uh, actually the net worth of that particular uh, institution uh, in the sense of uh, showing the assets and the liabilities uh, at a particular uh, point uh, in time. Uh, 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 this is a simple format of uh, the, 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 the balance sheet. And uh, I've just said that it has two uh, columns, the assets and the liabilities. And uh, when we are talking about now the assets of an institution, we say that uh, they are further divided into two. This is still another term, current assets and the fixed assets. Current assets are those items that can be easily be converted into cash form within a period of time, while the fixed assets take longer uh, to be liquidated or to be uh, converted into cash. Liabilities, just like assets, are also, of course, uh, broken down into two. What we have uh, the current liabilities and the long-term liabilities. 
Current liabilities are paid back within a short period of time, usually over a year, while the long-term liabilities are repaid after actually a given period of time. It can be a five-year bank loan, you took a bank loan of five years, maybe to purchase uh, some school property and, and, and all that. So uh, I want us to look at uh, these activity six uh, in the form, uh, uh, Nancy. Madam yes, Nancy, yes, uh, yes. I think we could use uh, the chat forum uh, to look at this activity. Uh, mm -hmm. We identify some of the assets that are owned by our institution, and then we mention the liabilities of our learnings. Or can we use the breakout rooms? What is the... Okay. I can also see they are talking of chat. Uh -huh. and answers are already coming in. Uh, bus. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, land. School farms, school bus buildings. Mm -hmm. Are those assets? That is part A. House. Very good. And mm -hmm. you also have Mr. Wasike's hand is up. Mm -hmm. We have furniture, we have buildings, tools, books, vehicles, uh, land, uh, liabilities, e.g., debts to suppliers, machines, cash. We have donations from donors, furniture. Loans in the banks, rental assets, land cash assets, and all that. What about the liabilities of a learning institution? Liabilities, liabilities. Thank you, members, for that active participation on part A. Those are some of the assets that are our institutions own. What are some of the liabilities? Just like Madam Nancy is putting a course. So we have uh, the loans, creditors. Mm -hmm. Liabilities, electricity bills, debtors, electricity bills, bank loans, water bills, bills payment, loans, okay, overheads, water bills, yeah, the food bills, the watchman bills, <laughs> monument <laughs> electricity bills. <laughs> okay, the okay I think uh, I think that is good. For that is good feedback yeah. members coming from the plenary on uh, some of the houses and the liabilities that our institutions have. I am sure you've talked about all this uh, money, uh, which, uh, of course, uh, money in the bank, which is cash at the bank, debtors, uh, those people we hold actually are known as debtors, furniture, buildings, land, animals, motor vehicles, liabilities, of course, are those uh, like creditors. Mm -hmm. Those people you are supposed to pay, the loans that we are supposed to service, wages. You can see watchman salary and that. That is actually what uh, our members are talking about. The salaries that, of course, we have to pay out uh, to our, 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 our cashiers or our support staff. So uh, actually, those are uh, that's a summary of what you have just presented. So then we, we are looking uh, at uh, the last part, and uh, this is uh, the auditing. And uh, when we talk about auditing, we are simply talking about an independent examination of financial records of a reporting entity by an auditor in pursuance of compliance to the set laws uh, to give assurance to stakeholders that the resources that have been allocated to that public entity have been consumed, have been used, have been utilized for the reason that they were allocated. And therefore, when carrying out this uh, in independent examination uh, of all the financial records, uh, it is worth noting that the heirs of the institutions are the people who have been entrusted as the accounting officers. They are the supervisors who are fully responsible for all the financial transactions and the preparation of all the financial statements of the institution. That is work that lies in the office of the head of the institution. And therefore, as a requirement by law, all heads of institutions are required to submit the books of accounts for actually this independent examination exercise within the given time to actually the office that is responsible for the execution of this independent examination. Most of the times 
Uh, this is actually by our auditors of the ministry. Uh, and therefore, the records of the school, uh, the financial records of the school must be availed for the audit exercise. Uh, and uh, this will, it's what will actually, uh, this examination of the school records of the finances is what we shall actually use as the audit evidence. Now, what are the financial records that we are talking about? These include receipts for transactions made, invoices for payments to be made, payment vouchers, the cash book itself, the trial balance, and the income and expenditure statement and the balance sheet among others. So these are some of the financial records that must be submitted by the end of the institution for this independent uh, examination by the Office of the Auditor General to check uh, on compliance and assure uh, the stakeholders that money has been spent for the purposes that it was intended uh, for. Now, uh, in this uh, case study, Madam Nancy, I would suggest yes. we use um, the breakout rooms. Uh, okay. Let us use the breakout rooms. You can okay. we are around 250. And therefore, mm. how many break, breakout rooms uh, did you have? Uh, 10, we have 10. So we then, 10. Uh, what we can do is that um, I want to give the instructions here that mm. uh, group one to five will look at part one of this case study. Then group six to 10 will give, uh, 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 will look at, uh, part B or part two of this case study. And then we shall sample the responses from among us, those two clusters of the groups to get feedback okay. in the plenary. So you can uh, go ahead and put us in breakout rooms. Uh, maybe you can read the case study for them. And then of course you share, you, 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 give, you actually put us into the breakout rooms. Okay, uh, this is the case, case study that is activity seven. Uh, Malewa Secondary School employed an accounts clerk. The school has never had an accounts person and the principal has been uh, doubling up as the bazaar. After three months, the school was expected to submit books of accounts for submission to the school auditors based at the county offices. After thorough scrutiny of the books, it was found out that proper records were not kept. And in addition, source documents were not attached. That is the case study. So for groups uh, one to five, you have question one. Identify the various source documents that need to be attached or needed to be attached. Okay, question two, that is for six to 10, give the areas that auditors look into while carrying out auditing in schools. So there you are. I can now proceed in putting you into the breakout rooms. So so you can proceed with the discussions into the breakout rooms. Ten minutes. So the minute you get there, you make it fast. Time is not on our side.
So welcome back to the plenary members. Uh, that was good sharing from uh, the plenary. I have been able to move around and around four groups. And I want to appreciate all of us for the active participation by all the members present. Asante Nisana. Madam Nancy. Yes, Mr. Kisilu. Maybe you can sample uh, uh, from the first court, a group to give feedback, and then from the other court, uh, another group to give some feedback. Then uh, we So share. we take one group from each for each question? Yeah, one group for each question, in the interest okay. of time. So can we have those who answered question one to five groups? Groups one to five answered question one. So I'll take uh, from two one was groups one to five. So I'll sample here. So let's have uh, John Maru. You can unmute John Maru. Yes. Okay, proceed. So you are discussing on the source of documents to be attached. And my group discussed on the receipts, invoices, fee register, Attendance register, cash books, store ledgers, check books, bank statements, and budget. Do you get me? We are getting yes, you so clearly, John. Yes, yeah. and then there was something also our group wanted to know on how the government can see loss of school funds. I think that's all mm -hmm. that we talked about. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Madam Nancy, over to you. Okay, let me get, give uh, our agenda balance on the same. Janet Sambu. Janet Sambu. And mute and talk, yes, proceed. Janet, Janet, yes. You, can, you, you, you have something to add on to what? Yes, let me add on what he said. Uh, my, my members also added on, um, they added on checkbooks, bank statements. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we Hello? can hear you clearly. Yes, my members mm -hmm. also added on um, bank statements, trial balances, uh, checkbooks, apart from what he, he mentioned. They also mentioned something on counterfoil. Yeah, I think that is all that I can add. Then also, uh, there are things that we would like to know as a group, the minimum documents for an audit to be performed and how to prepare. One member wanted to know how to prepare an asset register. Thank you. That was group one. Okay, thank you. So let's have a group. Group six to 10, the hands are up. Group six to 10, group six to 10. I have uh, Nicholas there. Nicholas, you can unmute and talk for the group. Answering question two. Uh, Alec, uh, we are in group nine and we are looking okay. at the areas, areas at which the auditors look while carrying out auditing. And the following are the parts that we could check. The first one was the type of expenses in the school, that is at salaries, the stock take report, sources of finance in the school, sources of finances, liabilities, cash balance and bank, bank, uh, bank statements. There's a member who identified a book called an S1 book, which was said to be a book that captures the consumables bought in the school a good example is a piece of chalk, writing pad, uh, writing inks, and uh, this uh, ink pen. The voucher book that's for payment. There are other documents like receipts and petty cash books. There is a specific mention on the minutes taken during the committee members. There's a minute book for so us to look at what you call the school strategic plan if it's in tandem with the expenditures. Records of purchases after the previous auditing. The previous auditor reports, refund report for the whole financial year, issue book, 
just among others. And lastly, we talked about we talked about the registers, such as the fee register, the impress register, and the school register. Just know that if they're in tandem, the school expenditures and income. That's all we had for group nine. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nicholas, for that presentation on question two. We can have uh, Tasmin Jamal. I believe you're answering question two. You can proceed and mute and talk. Yes, proceed. Yes. Good morning. Uh, good morning. So my colleague, yeah, we had a good input. They uh, talked about that the auditors look at the strategic plan. They look at the financial statements. They look at the trial balance. They look at the cash registers. They look at invoices and receipts, payment vouchers, stores, ledger, billing procedures, assets, register to check on, on uh, if they look at the asset re registers to check on the new assets. Uh, they look at the student population, they check the registers, they look at the petty cash books, they look at the school budget. Uh, auditors audit everything, including a cup of tea. Uh, when teachers go for the workshop, they also check on that. And they look at the register of how they, are, uh, how they pay the workers. For example, if somebody has been sent out to buy something and they don't, uh, the person doesn't come with the receipt, they also find a uh, look for the accountability for of that. Uh, the auditor's objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes the auditor's opinion. Yes. You're through? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you for thank that. Thank you very much. Uh, do we take our last one, uh, Monica Ochien? Mr. It's okay. Kisilu. It's okay. Yeah, you can proceed. That's the last one. Monica Ochien. Thank you. Good morning, uh, our facilitators and my fellow colleagues. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Now, we were able to handle the question on auditing. What are the things, attempts that auditors look at? when uh, conducting their auditing. First of all, we reminded ourselves on what auditing is. And uh, our members agreed that yes, that's a statutory activity that seeks to verify whether the institution's incomes have been well spent. And this they look at by looking at the various documents that we were able to take care of because uh, considering the importance of auditing to ensure that the organizations or the institution's funds are spent well and they do it also to discourage embezzlement. They do it to the last detail by looking at the following uh, statements and uh, the following records. One of them is the assets and liabilities of the organization. The assets, that's basically where the, uh, the institution has expended on. So theirs is to confirm that truly the assets do exist and they costed what are purported to, uh, to be their value. The liabilities, that is basically what the institutions owes at that time. And when they're looking at the liabilities, they are actually going into the details, seeking receipts, payment, uh, they, they look at uh, the, the, the requisitions for those liabilities and also going further to seek whether those liabilities were done in the best possible manner using the procurement. Uh, uh, laws that are there. Auditors also look at the budgets and also seek to find out whether those budgets were approved because that is very key. Yes, because you also, as a manager, might just come up with budgets, ad hoc budgets that were never approved. So they look at those budgets and they seek to find out whether those budgets had approvals. They use strategic plans that are well prepared by the organization. They look at the fee structures because those are some of the areas of revenue that uh, institutions use. They also seek a uh, look at uh, counterfeit receipt books to confirm that the receipts that have been, copies of the receipts that were used were actually used and those expenditures were expended. They look at the cash books in order to find out the areas of uh, revenue and areas of expenditure. They look at the payment vouchers to confirm that those expenditures 
uh, were truly there and those payments were rightfully done to the individuals that they purport to have made payments to. They look at the trial balances and fee balances uh, of the students. They look at the trial balance, financial registers, for example, the school logbooks. They look at the school enrollment to establish the true student population of that particular institution. They look at the money allocation for projects. And why they look at the money allocation? Because sometimes you might find projects that are running on inflated budgets. So they look at that and the money allocations to those ones. They also seek to establish those projects exactly who are given some of those uh, tenders. Because sometimes you find tenders being awarded, but again, awarded to people who should not be holding tenders by law. They look at commitment uh, registers, income and expenditure uh, procurements, and looking at looking to the last details of even the exams how those exams were purchased and who the suppliers were they look at the list of suppliers again to also establish who exactly are the suppliers in the institution because again you might also find uh, people who are supplying that are not supposed to be supplying under the law thank you i think uh that was what our group was able to do and my gratitude to the members of the group Good work, Monica Ocheng, for uh, that is really uh, wonderful. It was a good, 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 well-researched uh, uh, feedback for the group. Uh, Madam Nancy. Yes, Mr. Kisilu. There is this boy child, Martin Mahano, whose yes. hand has been up. Oh, what is the concern? Mr. Martin, proceed. You can proceed, Mr. Martin. Uh, Mr. Martin Makano, you can unmute. Unmute and talk. Unmute. Yes, yes, yes. Niko, Niko, too. Endelea. I have. Abari, aleo, tena. Niko, wazima. Yeah, let me add on. Hello? Yes, we can hear Hello. you. We can hear you. Hello? Yes, oh, we can fine, hear fine. you, Mr. Martin. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, we did question number two. Let me just uh, mention a few which I think might might not have been communicated to up to this time. So we talked about, in addition to what uh, my colleagues have said, we talked about uh, ensuring that proper receipting was done. We also talked about bank statements. We talked about the tendering process. process. Then we talked about BOM minutes and the tendering minutes. We also mentioned approved budgets. Then we talked about uh, fixed assets, in addition to what my friends have said. I think that's all I have to say now. So thank you very much, Martin and Nancy, for taking us through this uh, particular session. I want to appreciate uh, all the groups for the good work that um, they've done, and to Monica for the wonderful, well-researched feedback. You are more of an auditor than a leader in this group, and therefore you have great value in terms of the feedback that I've given us. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. And I want to say that um, um, uh, those are some of the uh, documents that um, uh, <clears throat> that uh, have, ought to be attached uh, uh, to the other books of accounts when auditors are looking at them. And you've actually mentioned all this, uh, the cash receipts, the invoices that have been sent, or those are that, that have been received, checks that have been canceled, the payment vouchers, uh, Madam Monica really exhausted this uh, part on the issues that auditors look into, whether money was spent for the intended purpose, and therefore uh, some of the documents that, of course, Madam Monica was talking about actually point out to actually this area, whether money was spent for the intended purpose, and therefore they need to cross-check that you raise this amount of money to buy this uh, asset, yeah, they look at the market value vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, the amount of money that you've got and that. 
whether the pr proper procedures were followed. So the, the other documents, you know, in a transaction, you know, all the way from uh, the, 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 the raising of the service orders or uh, the purchase orders, all the way up to the invoices, the auditors would like to see whether the proper procedures were followed in actually uh, procurement. That is why Mr. Choge talked about, of course, the things auditors will keep on revisiting these documents. It is important to actually keep the procurement records in our schools for a minimum of six years. Whether money was lost in the process of appropriation and whether evidence of all these transactions made uh, is available. That far, I want to say we have come to the end of our discussion and we want to actually uh, give feedback uh, in the form of group processing uh, remember, we have all actively participated. And in our KWL, we have been talking about what we know, what we want to learn, and uh, we have left one blank portion on what I learned. So I just want in the form of feedback, in the, in using the chat forum, you just mention one thing that you have learned and one thing that you have contributed to the group, just in two minutes, because uh, I need to take care of your time. One thing that you have learned, one thing that you have contributed to the group. Madam Nancy, you can sample for us kindly. Okay. They, they are talking of, I've learned the auditing areas about auditing. More to come, more to come about financial terms, cash books, cash books, financial terms, books of accounts, handing over documents, uh, auditing, vote heads financial terminology, assets and liabilities, about types of cash books, financial terms, books of accounts. Uh, I have learned about uh, financial terminologies, cash books, uh, what's needed, what heads, what's handing over. Yeah, you've had a class which was listening, Mr. Kisilu. Yeah. Now, one thing I have contributed to the group, your contribution to the group, trial balances, that's what they've learned, books of accounts, etc. So you, what have you contributed to the group? Who are you? Are you a member? Group discussion, yes. One contributed in the presentation of the, was a secretary, uh, secretary, read the question, was the chair and the uh, secretary, was a secretary, a member. I was a chair for group two, a member, group discussion was a uh, chair, all this, without that, the chair of group nine, group six, member. Yeah, yeah, the members were actively, this tells us the members yeah. were actively participating. Very in active the, group, very active, were active. Group. Yes, thank you, group thank five, you very yeah. much. Thank yeah. you, thank you members uh, for that feedback. At least uh, it is evident that um, uh, you, you learned something and that of course you actively participated in the class and now, remember, we are walking a journey and we have to keep on reflecting. We have to keep on reflecting. And therefore, in this journey, you are required to fill in your reflective journal uh, what you have learned, what you need to learn more about and what needs to be improved. And therefore, this is one portion that you have to go to the LMS and actually fill in on the reflective journal, and especially on this day, what you learn, what you need to learn more about. Remember, this is an area that has really elicited a lot of discussion. Uh, I could see some of us say that, of course, they are still gray. They are still gray areas. Uh, remember, we have only started on a journey on financial literacy, and uh, we cannot go deep before we look into the terminologies. So that, of course, now when we are looking at how to prepare a trial balance, how to come up with a balance sheet, how to make entries on the cash book, then we must first understand what a cash book is, what a trial balance is, what a balance sheet is. So that is the base. We were laying a base. We were laying a foundation for other more uh, serious discussions that are to come in the future. And therefore, in your reflective journal, just go into the LMS and key in what you learn, what you need to learn more about, and what needs to be improved in the process of our uh, journey. 
And therefore, we expect you also later in the day, you have some activity to carry on. We want, uh, of course, you to look at that work. You can take a snapshot and later the notes will also be shared. So the counts of institutions shall be audited and reported upon uh, in accordance, of course, with the Public Audit Act of 2015 and as a certified copy of the audited annual statement of accounts and other information about the revenue, expenditure, assets, and liabilities be submitted to the CS. Now, you are required to describe the auditing process in a public institution like in a school. You explain the importance of auditing books of accounts in public institutions. Then you analyze the information contains in the analysis cash book in your school and not the vote ends. So that is the extended learning activity that we would like you to engage in later in the day. I want to say that uh, uh, you have been a great team all the way uh, since uh, Tuesday uh, throughout the week and up to this weekend. We have really enjoyed your company. I want to say that uh, uh, you have been a great team. Thank you very much for taking your time for being with us. And I want to say that we have come to the end of our session today. So, Madam Nancy, over to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kisilu, for that presentation. Uh, Madam Rebecca, way forward, go for a word of prayer, and then we call it quits. And then remember, we are going to get a snapshot at the end of this. And it's for those who are having challenges uh, in assessing the virtual campus. You can liaise with the coordinators who will give, uh, who will refer you to the respective ICT support uh, personnel who will assist you. Others, you'll get more enhanced uh, notes and information on what we have covered so far in the LMS. And as I've said, if you have a challenge uh, in the WhatsApp group, you can always link with the coordinator who will refer you to the ICT personnel who will be of great assistance to you. Others, thank you so far. You've been wonderful. A uh, group which has been quite participative, and it has uh, we, we've had a good time. I can see some hands are raised up, Mr. Kisilu. I can unmute some. They say, is it a word of thank you or questions unclear? Mr. Kisilu? Yes. Okay, let me unmute uh, Rachel Karevi. Rachel, you can unmute. Yeah. Professor. Thank you so much. I would wish really to appreciate, uh, first do an appreciation and if possible to do a prayer. I okay. wish to take this chance to really appreciate all the facilitators that have given their time to come be with us. It looked like a very long time from Tuesday to Saturday, but it has become a very interesting, interactive, informative session where personally I feel like it was just a very short time and needed to be extended. And uh, in fact, God knows how much you've given in uh, to be there and to really give us this information. May the Lord bless you now that we start a new year, that all where you tread, his blessings will be upon you. Thank you also to the members uh, all the students in this class. May the Lord bless you. We have had a very interactive, a very active uh, session. And it is because of all of us being available, being uh, responsible enough into giving in what is expected of us. And therefore, may all of us be blessed by the Lord. And may this new year bring us much more uh, that will help us to give the best to the learners that are entrusted to us. And may these learners really feel that we are the teachers they should have. So may the Lord really bless you, bless all of us, and may this year be the best of all what we've lived. And uh, may the end of it bring us joy. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Rachel. We are going to get you for a prayer. You can unmute. Meanwhile, we hear from Mwajuma. Mwajuma, you can unmute. So Rachel, you'll pray for us as Majuma proceeds Majuma. Yes. Majuma, Maybe Majuma is not aware that his hand is up. 
Okay, fine. I can now proceed to Mary. Akinyi, Mary Akinyi. Thank you, and Madam let's... Nancy. I've been looking for this chance and our presenters. Now, I had this burning question in general. Like uh, we have been told that there is other certificate we have done in some other areas, uh, which is not directly affiliated to, with the TSC group. So I, I'm wondering how do we uphold those uh, certificates in the campus to be part of the 20 months? I don't know whether I can get my answer here or that can be dealt with somewhere. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kisilo. You can answer that. We have now. Uh, uh, yes, I, I did not. I did not get the concern of Madam Akinye. Yes, let okay. me come again and give an example. Like I've done a, a some certificate in human trafficking and also in child policy. Um. Okay, now, I get you. I get. You, I get you now. Maybe now for that, eh, I think now that depends solely on the discretion of your employer. So it is determined uh, whatever, of course, uh, your employer determines in the form of maybe what they would like you to get some credit scores uh, in your TPAD, something like that, then uh, is purely uh, in the hands of the employer. So as as Kemi, uh, of course, we have professional development programs that, of course, we take to teachers and uh, we talk to your employer, TSC, who really credit, uh, accredits, uh, accredits, of course, what we take you through. Like our diploma program, of course, uh, has been given uh, some weight when it comes to your professional development. For other programs, then, of course, it is purely on the discretion of your employer, Teacher Service Commission. Mm -hmm. okay. Because from what is being assessed, it's like there's some 20 marks that has to come somewhere. So I was wondering those other areas that we might have been done and we have the certificate. So uh, thank you. Maybe uh, if I check out later the procedure of finding out and, and how to uphold those ones. Thank you, Mr. Kizuru. Okay. Thank you, Nancy, also. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Mary Akinye. Uh, next, Mr. Kisilo, I get another one, and uh, we we have a word no, of prayer. I, I I think in the interest of time, yes, the the members had requested that we actually finish up the class at ten thirty, and now it is noon. Yes, Good. please. So I think uh, you could uh, uh, maybe I don't know I don't know what is your opinion. Oh, uh, it's the same. Unless we have burning uh, questions or issues which can be put up in the chat as we wind up. Others for now, let me say thank you on behalf of my colleagues, facilitators, Madam Rebecca uh, and others, and Mr. Choge for today, and Mr. Kisilu. You've been wonderful and it's uh, been a good time being with you. What I can uh, just uh, urge you is what you've learned, uh, you put it into practice. Put it into practice. Uh, have uh, social networks with your colleagues, you share, you benchmark what you're doing from one school to another. And of course, with that, you're going to move a notch higher. And TPD is easy. Some add uh, that we are on exams. No, we have no exams. It's just discussions, reflections. Now you move next to the LMS, as you've been told by the facilitators. And from there, everything is uh, done. So, Madam Rebecca, anything you have before we get a word of prayer? Madam Rebecca? Morioki, Madam Rebecca. Okay, since she's not on, uh, she's not around. Others, can we have a volunteer to pray for us uh, before we call it quits for today? And others, you had have appointed a Karidi. You had already Rachel appointed Karidi. Karidi, Rachel. Okay, you are unmuted. Rachel, Karidi, proceed. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, maybe be, before you, you clear it, you can tell us what the way forward now that we have finished the introductory module. Maybe you'll say that after the prayer. So let's put ourselves in, the fr in front of God, thanking him and uh, praising him for this wonderful session that we've had. Twasema asante wa. Mother, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, dear Lord, at the end of this session. Thank you because you have been gracious to each one of us. Thank you because you have kept us safe and sound. Dear Lord, we want to appreciate the fact that it was not in our efforts, but it is only because of your graciousness. We give you thanks because of our facilitators who have been continually present to make this session a success. Thank you because of the many people behind the cuttings that made sure that all was well. Thank you, Lord, because of all the students who left their work, who in a lot of commitment found time to be here. We thank you, dear Lord, because we know that this is not in vain, but you're preparing us for a noble job that you have assigned each one of us in our different schools. We are asking you to get ahead of us, especially in this new year, that we may be able to execute all our responsibility, all our teaching activities in the best way. We call upon your Holy Spirit to hold our hearts, to inspire our minds and our hearts, that everything that we do may always be for the greater glory of your holy name. Be with all yeah. our skills and learners, and be with all our staff in our different schools, that as we start the new year, that we start the academic year on 23rd, all may be well, and we may be directed by the same spirit. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of Amen. the Father, and of the Son, and of the, the, Holy, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, Mr. Kisilo. Please. Mr. Kisilo. Uh, th yes. There was somebody more than uh, uh, a question, is it? What there next was... after this? As you answer that, uh, participants, yes. you can open your videos as Mr. Kisilo answers that, and then I take you the slide shots. You can open what? your videos. What's the question about? 